Hello, I'm Bruce Yanni, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at a classic physics demonstration, the spinning bottles. This piece starts with two bottles that are filled with water. There's a bobber inside that's tied to the bottom, right in the center of the jar. Now, with this arm free to rotate, the question is, what would happen inside the bottles if I were to give this thing a quick spin? Will the bobbers move to the inside, will they move to the outside, or will they stay right in the center? Let's give it a spin and see. Clockwise. If we watch it in slow motion, it appears that the bobbers are moving towards the inside. Now would it make any difference if I spun it in the opposite direction? Counterclockwise. We see the same results if we spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. When the rotor is stationary, we can see the bobbers are located in the center of the jars. But once it starts moving, we'll notice that they move towards the center of rotation. That's because they're less dense than the water. Now this is an easy build, so let's take a quick look. The jar lids are attached with screws and then covered with glue. The bobbers on each end are held in place by fishing line. To assemble it, we'll fill the jars up. And it doesn't matter whether they have a few bubbles in it or not. We can just watch and see what they do also. Now tighten the jars down tight. On that end, that's good. Bring the other jar over and we'll tighten this one. Make sure it's nice and tight so they don't leak. There we go. The base is made from a piece of framing lumber. It has this big bolt that goes through it, and it's recessed so it doesn't scratch the table. A couple washers on top, and we'll turn this piece over, put it on that bolt. The nut has a little bit of glue on it, so we can tighten it down and it'll stay in place. But don't make it too tight, otherwise it won't turn. Now we simply give it a spin. Now I do have another one to take a look at. And that's going to use these plastic bottles filled with two different liquids. The liquid in the bottom is water and it has blue food coloring. The top liquid is mineral oil and it has a red dye in it. Here's the spinning platform. The base was made with the bearings from a Lazy Susan. And then this top piece simply has these pegs and that's going to hold my bottles in place. As I lay the bottle on its side, notice what happens to the two layers of liquids. Let's give it a spin. And here it is in slow motion. Look at the separation. As the bottles slow down and stop, the liquids will separate out due to gravity. Now a real centrifuge would spin thousands of times faster and it's used to separate materials according to their density or the particle size. A typical example might be separating the components of blood. Let's try it with two more bottles. In this case, we're going to use some green water added to vegetable oil. And the yellow vegetable oil is going to float on top because it's less dense. I'll fill up the bottle here. If I turn it upside down and then right it, we can see that the water and oil do separate fairly easily. Now in this bottle, I've already drained some of the liquids, and I'm going to add a third one here. In this case, it's Karo Syrup, which is going to be a little bit denser than the water, so it's going to sink down to the bottom. So now we're going to have three levels in this bottle. When I turn it sideways, we see that same separation. Now let's give these two bottles a spin. Here it is in slow motion. As it stops, we see it separates due to gravity again. Now let's try this once more. In this case, we're going to use marbles in one bottle and glitter in the other bottle. 